Greetings everybody, Strategic Sage here. This particular video is aimed at you if you're new to the game, perhaps even new to the franchise. Don't necessarily want to go through an entire walkthrough of the game, but just want to avoid some of the pitfalls that new players can fall into. So, if that's you, I hope you'll find this useful, and if not, you're more experienced with the game, then I will be doing more full mission playthroughs in the future. To begin with, just read. Read, 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 read. A lot of players are missing things that the game is trying to tell you about itself because they're dismissing what the game is presenting as story fluff. But tied in with that at the same time, it's also explaining to you game mechanics. So even if you don't care about the plot, read. Down here at the bottom, there's one of uh, tongue-in-cheek comments by the developers in one of the missions here. I'll be very surprised if anyone has read this far. From what I see, most players never bother reading stuff. And that's a joke. But there's a lot of truth to it as well. Towers. I think by far the most important and most commonly missed issue by new players is the fact that towers produce energy. They are not just for forming connections. This is the very beginning of the first mission of the campaign. At the bottom we have this flashing yellow hazard, tower energy offline. This is followed up on by some text blurbs and plot explanations, etc. talking about how towers are surrounded by the green energy soylent fields after you turn them on that's where you get your energy from your network initially etc a few missions from now tower energy will go offline again and that is a major plot point the central plot point of that mission fixing that getting that back in working order urns come up quite a bit as well this is the 10th mission of the campaign it's the first one that you get urns on which is the tech upgrade system in creeper world 4 and quite often people are not aware that you can put urns in weapons even after they've finished the entire campaign and here it's actually the first thing the game wants you to do I should select a weapon and click the urn button in the command menu so just again another example you really want to read what the game is trying to tell you learn from it it'll make your life easier now another really good way to find things particularly if you might have missed something check out the info screen here and this populates as the game goes along. Urns aren't on here, they'll be on here starting with the next mission. That's typically how it goes. They're not on there for the mission which they're introduced, but they are there following on. But you can see, like at the beginning of the game, you don't have these weapons on there. We can go through and see what pylons do. We can see what mortars do and missiles and nullifiers, etc. So this is another good resource if you're stuck on some mechanic that's been around and you just aren't sure how it works. This is home. It's the third mission in the campaign, and I think the first one that really affords a good opportunity to show how you're going to want to start off maps in general. So, first thing is going to be placing your Rift Lab, almost always. Where do you want to do it? Well, up over here would obviously be a really bad place. We're right next to a bunch of creeper. We're going to get swamped quickly. Somewhere like over this way on the edge in the corner. I mean, we could do that, but it's going to be more difficult to expand. Again, there's creeper nearby. Whereas over here in the middle, we can expand fairly quickly because we can expand in all directions. And we can not have any resistance from the creeper immediately because there's none that are going to swamp this area for quite a while. So, starting with that, that sort of leads into the next bit which is not at all unique to Creeper World. Build your economy before you try to fight. At the start here, you can see in the upper left we are producing one energy from our Rift Lab better than nothing but it's not a lot if we build out a network of towers and we continue building that until the creeper tells us we have to stop that is until the creeper is about to become a threat and then we want to begin building weapons and the further we can get with the economy before then the more resources we have the more weapons we'll be able to field to fight back better so that's the essential bit here you keep going with your economic expansion until the creeper tells you not to and for purposes of demonstration we're stopping here we're speeding up we're watching our deficit okay now it's positive we have positive energy flow that means that we can afford to begin throwing out some weapons and so we're just gonna gradually do that over here particularly in these areas we've got you know, some hostiles that way. Let's perhaps throw a mortar on a few of these sides. 
And in general, that should be pretty good at keeping us from having any problems with being overrun at the moment. Maybe we'll throw up another mortar over here. But then at that point, it can often be useful to not really try to just go expand right away, but build a mobile reserve. So let's say we had a few cannons and a few mortars as backup. And again, you need other weapons later. There are other threats than Creeper. This is just a basic example. But if there's a breakthrough somewhere, there's resistance somewhere that's stronger than you thought it was. Well, you know, if we had to move a bunch of weapons, we could do that now. We could take these mortars and cannons, like if we had a problem over this way that we weren't expecting, just flood them up there, fill the gap, replace them in your mobile reserve, and much better chance of holding the line against any particular threats that we didn't foresee if you do it in that manner. Finally, it's worth having a perspective on how much the Farsight Expedition actually means in Creep World 4, because the campaign in a lot of games is the main thing, and then once you finish that, you're done. Creeper World 4, of course, has the randomly generated maps. Some like them, some don't. There's the beta maps and the span experiments, but the real heart of it is the colonies, because the numbers just keep going up and up. As of right now, there are 411, less than a month after the game's release. And there's thousands for each of the previous games. I'm sure this will probably exceed those. I wouldn't be surprised to get to over 10,000 eventually. So you can pick and choose what you like and what you don't like in there. Nobody's ever going to play them all. But the replayability and the adventures are essentially endless. So enjoy it. And that's all for me today. Thanks everybody for watching. More Creeper World 4 coming up soon.